It's the Weather Extreme video. This is the morning edition for Friday, November 11th. Thanks to all of our veterans who serve our country on this Veterans Day. And we are in a severe drought looking for rain. Can we find any? Let's dive in there and see what we got this morning. That's the uh, big picture, water vapor satellite view. Contours are at 500 millibars. Troughing over the northeast in the Great Lakes and upper low near El Paso. Some high cirrus clouds with a subtropical jet stream west of the state, but that high altitude moisture will not help. And wow, it's cold. Again, this morning, considerably colder than forecast. We had forecast upper 30s, and uh, Birmingham's at 38. But look at those eastern communities. Uh, 30 at Fort Payne, Gadsden, and Anniston. Many spots are at the, the free, first freeze of the season this morning. Haleyville, 32. Cullman, 33. And again, we'll see these uh, chilly nights for a while with uh, comfortable days. Dry air heats and cools very effectively. This is a good reminder. And really and truly, we're one of the coldest places in the entire country. Uh, you can see some 30s across the Rockies and up north, but uh, we're pretty cold down here. Uh, frost advisories north of us in Tennessee and Kentucky, and obviously many places in our state have frost this morning. This is the severe weather outlook today. We're not going to spend a lot of time on that map for obvious reasons. And this is the map we focus on every day, the QPF map, the expected rain for the next seven days, and that's not very encouraging. In the midst of this drought, this is showing basically nothing through Friday morning of next week. And the question is, can that cold front just beyond this period bring us some rain? We'll dive into modeling and take a look. Speaking of the drought, uh, the drought monitor was released yesterday. 52% of the state now is in either extreme or exceptional drought, basically the entire northern half of the state. And I'm afraid that map will just expand and coverage those categories when it's released next week on Thursday. And the tropics, wouldn't it be nice to have a little weak tropical system come up and wet us down for about three days? But no, uh, nothing happening there. Uh, and again, there's time for one more, but uh, obviously the season is winding down. So let's see if we can find something in the mid-latitudes to help us. Here we go, model fans, the GFS, the 06Z run today at noon. Little upper low near El Paso, cold trough over the northeastern states. And again, a sunny day, maybe some high clouds around today. The high will be close to 70. Tomorrow, same thing. We'll start the day well down in the 40s. Colder pockets go in the 30s. The high will be in the uh, 60s. The daytime high should be a bit cooler. And the same thing on Sunday. Highs mid to upper 60s. Go to Monday of next week, and it's a familiar sight. There's nothing there. Uh, the GFS showing a high of 74 on Tuesday. Again, same thing. Uh, the, the models, uh, the GFS brings the high back down to 67. We know there's a trough down in the eastern Gulf producing rain there. Tampa Bay, St. Pete, no help here. Wednesday, chilly morning, a cool afternoon, and this is Thursday. We're watching that disturbance in the western states. Look at all the snow. I mean, big, big snows down into Flagstaff, Arizona. And this is Friday of next week, the 18th. And unfortunately, on this run, the GFS kind of brings out that trough in a uh, weaker fashion and farther north. It's got a, a very deep surface low that's uh, on the Minnesota-North Dakota border, 988 millibars. That's a blizzard for parts of Montana up into Canada, and the trailing front, though, just looks very inactive. And then we'll go to Saturday the 18th, and that's very discouraging. The surface low is at James Bay, a little weak band of showers, and that's not going to do anything. And again, this could flip again. This is beyond seven days, and, and again, the pattern would favor us getting some rain with that front. So this has plenty of time to flip back, but again, this one individual deterministic run, certainly not very encouraging for rain. And then this is Sunday the 20th, and we're back in a colder and drier air mass. Uh, the European, it does the same thing. This is Saturday. It's got the surface low over the UP of Michigan, Upper Peninsula. The trailing front is basically inactive, which is so rare for November. Typically, cold fronts pack a mean punch this time of the year. So again, the latest runs in-house of these global models are not looking good at this point. Like This is the rain off the European uh, valid uh, Sunday, the 20th of November, between now and November 20th, 10 days out, basically nothing. 
This is an updated look at the ensemble output. And again, we have great hope for December. Uh, see all the shades of red. Now, the ensemble mean has come down a little bit. Instead of being over six inches, now it's a little over five inches uh, between late November and uh, late December. But still, the evidence is strong that uh, December will break out of this. And again, I, there's a chance we could see rain clearly, uh, you know, eight days from now. But these latest runs are not looking encouraging. And the numbers, the bottom numbers have not performed well. Like this morning, we've got many spots below freezing where the ensemble was showing 40-something. But uh, still, the, you see the basic idea. Cool days and uh, rather chilly nights for the next 15 days. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this morning. We'll have notes in the blog. Next video here by 4 o'clock this afternoon. If you can't catch us this evening on the live stream or the television side, ABC 3340 News at 4, 5, 6, and 10 o'clock. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and God bless.